Ever wondered about the origins of Dravidian literature and the cultural richness of South India? They find their roots in the Sangam period. This unique period, spanning from the 3rd century BC to the 3rd century AD, was a time of profound cultural and intellectual flourishing in the region south of the Krishna and Tungabhadra rivers. Named after the Sangam academies that were held during this time, the Sangam period was a golden era of literature and scholasticism. These academies, supported by the royal patronage of the Pandya kings of Madurai, were not just places of learning, they were also where eminent scholars assembled and functioned as a board of censors, ensuring that only the choicest literature was rendered in the nature of anthologies. According to Tamil legends, there were three Sangams, also known as the Academy of Tamil Poets, held in ancient South India, popularly called Much Changam. The first Sangam, believed to have been held at Madurai, was attended by gods and legendary sages. Unfortunately, no literary work from this Sangam has survived to our times. The second Sangam was held at Kapadapuram. From this Sangam, we have one surviving work, the Tolkapiam. This work, though primarily a treatise on Tamil grammar, also provides insights into the political and socio-economic conditions of the time. The third and final Sangam was once again held at Madurai. From this Sangam, a few Tamil literary works have survived, serving as valuable sources to reconstruct the history of the Sangam period. These works are not just pieces of literature, but also windows into a world long past, providing glimpses of the social, political and cultural life of that time. These Sangam academies were the birthplace of Dravidian literature, a treasure trove of knowledge about ancient South India. The seeds sown during the Sangam period would go on to shape the literary, cultural and intellectual landscape of South India for centuries to come. The Sangam period produced a rich variety of literary works, each unique in its content and purpose. A shining gem among these is Tolkapiyam, authored by Tolkapiyar. Reputed as the earliest of Tamil literary works, it is a treatise on Tamil grammar. Yet, it offers more than just linguistic rules, it provides us with glimpses into the political and socio-economic conditions of the time, painting a vivid image of life during the Sangam period. Next, we have the Etutogai, or the Eight Anthologies. This collection of eight works, including Angurunuru, Narinai, Agana Uru and others, is another testament to the rich literary culture of the Sangam age. These works offer insights into various aspects of life, from love and valour to ethics and morality. Then there's the Patu Patu, the Ten Idols, a collection of ten works, each narrating its unique story. From Thirumuruga Rupadai to Malay Padukadam, these works encapsulate the ethos of the Sangam period in their verses. Pathin and Kilkanaku, a compilation of eighteen works, delves into the realm of ethics and morals. The most noteworthy among these is Tirukural, authored by Thiruvalavar, the revered Tamil poet and philosopher. This work stands as a timeless guide to life, its wisdom transcending the boundaries of time and space. Finally, we come to the two epics of the Sangam period, Silapathikaram and Manimegalai, penned by Elango Adigal and Sitalai Satana, respectively. These epics provide invaluable details about the Sangam society and polity, their verses resonating with the pulse of the time. Each of these works, in their unique way, contributes to the rich tapestry of Tamil literature. They serve as windows into the past, illuminating the socio-political life of the Sangam period. They allow us to traverse the corridors of time and experience the vibrancy of an era long past. These works not only contribute to Tamil literature, but also serve as a window into the socio-political life of the Sangam Sangam period. Literature was not the only source of information about the Sangam period. Indeed, other historical documents and writings contribute to our understanding of this era. Greek authors such as Megasthenes, Strabo, Pliny and Ptolemy, for instance, have left records about commercial trade contacts between the West and South India. Their accounts highlight the economic exchanges and cultural interactions that occurred, bringing a new perspective to our knowledge of the period. In addition, the Ashokan inscriptions provide a glimpse into the political landscape of the Sangam era. They mention the Chera, Chola and Pandya rulers, who were prominent in the south of the Mauryan Empire. Not to forget the Hathigumpha inscription of Karavela of Kalinga, which also makes mention of Tamil kingdoms. These sources, although distinct from the Sangam literature, offer invaluable insights into the Sangam period. These sources help us piece together the vibrant tapestry of Sangam India, expanding our understanding beyond the literary realm.
The Sangam era was a time of powerful dynasties and thriving trade. South India was under the rule of three principal dynasties, the Keras, Cholas and Pandyas. Each of these dynasties held sway over different territories and brought unique contributions to the political and cultural landscape of the Sangam period. Let's start off with the Cheras. They held dominion over the central and northern parts of Kerala, as well as the Kongu region of Tamil Nadu. Their capital was Vanji, and the important west coast ports of Musiri and Tondi were under their control. The emblem of the Cheras was a bow and arrow, symbolizing their military prowess. The Cheras gained prominence through their trade with the Romans, even building a temple dedicated to Augustus. The most renowned ruler of the Cheras was Sengutuvan, known as the Red Chera or the Good Chera, who reigned in the second century AD. His military achievements have been immortalized in the epic Silapathikaram. Next, we have the Cholas and Pandyas. Although we'll delve deeper into their histories in another episode, it's worth mentioning their significant roles during the Sangam period. The Cholas held territories in the fertile Kauvery Delta, while the Pandyas ruled over the southernmost regions of Tamil Nadu. Both these dynasties had their unique emblems, with the Cholas represented by a tiger and the Pandyas by a carp. They both played crucial roles in the political, cultural and economic developments of the Sangam era. Trade was a vital aspect of the Sangam period, with these dynasties controlling key trade routes and ports. Their interactions with foreign traders, particularly the Romans, led to a prosperous era of cultural exchange and economic growth. This period is renowned for its thriving trade in spices, textiles and precious stones. The political landscape of the Sangam period was as dynamic and diverse as its literature, making it an era of immense historical significance.